Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. We just hit 34.2k subscribers as we begin and continue our fight on the biggest election subscriber war that has ever taken place in the history of the election community, Red Eagle vs. LTE. We gained 300 yesterday, he gained 100 yesterday. So actually, if anything, this is beneficial to both of our channels. So you guys know what to do. We're going to go beat him. So like this video down below and subscribe to the channel. But before we get started, I'd like to take some time out of my day to tell you guys about my Patriot Supply. We live in a world that is in crisis, one that we do not know what to expect next. As Americans, we need to be prepared. And that includes avoiding the long lines at the grocery store by stocking up on disaster food supply. And there is no better disaster food kit than the ones over at American Made, My Patriot Supply. Take action so you're ready for what's coming and save $100 on a four-week emergency food kit when you go to my special website, preparewithredeagle.com. Those that know what's coming are preparing today. Go to preparewithredeagle.com. That's preparewithredeagle.com. And I was thinking about the 2020 election the other day when I basically came up with this and I said, forget about Trump for a minute, but do people actually expect Joe Biden to be a good or even above average president? I'm going to be asking this question to people because you have a lot of people in the polls that show Joe Biden up over Donald Trump six percentage points, and that's what the polls show for now. But the real question is, do people actually expect Joe Biden to be a good or even above average president? Because you look within the polls and the enthusiasm levels for Biden are absolutely down the drain. Even Hillary Clinton, who people say was more unpopular, which is true. Also, Trump is more popular than what he was in 2016. Actually, Hillary had a lot more enthusiasm on her side than Joe Biden does. The bottom line is a lot of people are just sick and tired of being force fed garbage in politics. This transcends Republican, this transcends Democrat, any party lines, any sort of the party lines thing that transcends all of it. The bottom line is Joe Biden is just a turd that's from the establishment that's been force fed to the people by the Democratic Party establishment and the DNC. And there's really nothing that's good about this guy. Why? He was Obama's VP for eight years and did absolutely nothing while doing so. I mean, the guy was literally senator of Delaware. That's not a very prestigious position to hold in government. It's really not. Senator of Delaware, he ran for president three times and failed until Barack Obama picked him up off the garbage heap and said, here, come on, Joe, I'm making you my VP. Let's make you VP for eight years and we'll keep you out of the public spotlight and you'll basically get nothing done either way. That's kind of the case. Now, apparently, we saw a similar thing with Hillary, at least, though. Hillary actually had a base behind her. People said, oh, she's experienced, she's done this, she's done that. Although there were a lot of scandals and a lot of dark things about Hillary, and that's kind of what ended up dooming her at the end is because you had a populist in Trump that railed against that. In Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney's another weak candidate, the safe pick. Oh, he's safe. Oh, he'll he'll actually dip into the to the liberal margins. He was governor of Massachusetts. Similar thing like what they're saying with blue collar Joe. And Romney did worse in a lot of the so-called tap into demographic than what even McCain did in 08. And if you look at Biden, he'll probably do worse with the so-called lunch bucket white working class than what Hillary Clinton did in 2016. That's basically a fact. McCain in 2008 was just a, oh, the safe moderate, oh, he's a veteran, he'll win. That's not how it works. Um, Kerry in 2004, similar thing, wasn't enough to stop Bush in a fairly unpopular war. If you look back at 1996, Bob Dole, he was really uninspiring, wasn't able to even come close, wasn't even able to even narrow the gap at any point with Bill Clinton, and he ended up losing by a very big margin at the end of the day. I didn't include Al Gore. Personally, I thought Al Gore was a little bit better than some of these guys on this list. I thought that uh, George Bush wasn't really that um, good in my opinion either, but uh, it was kind of like two meh candidates. But all the other people on here were definitely below average, and I think Biden belongs on this list. Donald Trump has galvanized a movement behind him, and the movement has stayed with him and will stay with him no matter what. And this is a movement in a time where people were losing their jobs and Trump has done enough. He has enough data to back his claims up to say, hey, look, I delivered. We do have this thing that's going on right now, and it's unfortunate. But even the polls that show Trump losing by 
10, 11, even 14 points. They still trust Trump to come out of a recession compared to Biden. That's kind of something that makes me think then say, do the polls really all make sense? And right now they usually don't, especially if you weight the polls. Again, if you look at Ohio, if you look at the Ohio poll today that has Biden, I think, up by one. If you weight it properly by education and party ID, Trump is up by 10. So you can't really trust the polls, especially in the Midwest. I also said um, yesterday on Twitter that it, in terms of the polls, in the Midwest, the polls are usually going to underestimate Trump. In the Southwest places like Arizona, Nevada, places like that, there you might say, okay, the polls might overestimate Trump. That's basically what it was in 2016. That's basically what it was in 2018. Now, North Carolina and Florida, the polls are relatively decent there. I'm going to say that the polls are decent. They're not too good. They're not too bad, especially if you look at the fact of Florida, um, though, in 2018. They can be a little awful as Florida in 2018. I think they had, I think the polling aggregate showed Gillum winning by like five and, and Rick Scott losing by five as well. And Rick Scott won and Gillum lost and Ron DeSantis won. So the polls need to be taken with a little bit of a grain of salt this far out. When you have the conventions, we can start talking about um, the polls being more accurate, especially the debates, then they'll be even more accurate. And even leading up to the final days, the polls still are not necessarily the most accurate. So the second part of this tweet, I said, criticize Obama all you want. He was charismatic and gave hope to a generation. Again, if you like Obama, you'll probably agree with the statement. If you don't like him, you have to just accept the statement because he was the change candidate at the time. Did he deliver that change? In my opinion, not really. You saw foreign policy. You saw more of the same. You saw us getting deeper and deeper into, into the wars. And Republicans in 2012 just failed to answer properly. And I see a similar pattern here. Biden is not going to answer. I've said it from the beginning. If the Democrats want to run somebody that can beat Trump, they're going to have to run somebody that talks like a moderate, that is not patronizing, that doesn't come off like they hate middle America. And you're going to have to have somebody that's going to hit Trump even from the right or from his platform on some issues saying, oh, you failed here. Oh, you failed here. That's why I thought Tulsi Gabbard... Um, at first, Andrew Yang, then he went off the deep end. But Tulsi Gabbard could actually go up there and beat Donald Trump in a general election, in my opinion. I would not vote for her, but I think that she actually could have beaten Trump. Joe Biden cannot beat Donald Trump. The guy is not there. The guy is, his, his brain is not there. It's gone. His brain is gone. Um, he's basically got borderline dementia. I'm not a doctor. I'm not able to legally diagnose him with anything, but... Um, Honestly, if you just watch the guy talk and you watch a lot of his speeches, his mind just is not really there. So when I see this RCP map and they make this map, it's actually very strange. I don't want people laughing at this map. Um, they need to understand what the map's um, determination is. It's not basically, oh, New Jersey is lean because it, the map says it's lean. It doesn't mean it's going to go dem by less than five, just like Indiana doesn't mean it's going to go for Trump by less than five. The map is a weird map, um, the way they have states likely and lean. I don't exactly know what the methodology is, but at the same time, it's basically an expanded battleground. So any state that's going to be 10 within 10% either way is a toss up. If it's 10 to 15, it's lean, blue or R, 15 to 20, then it'll be likely, and then 20 plus will be solid, blue or red is what I believe the map's um, makeup is. So when I look at this map, I basically see a wide open door. Apparently they give Biden, I believe, like 180, they give Trump something short of 130. So basically Trump has a wide open door, he's got a big chance to win. You're going to have to give him, obviously, Arizona, Texas, Georgia, North Carolina, Iowa, and Ohio, and the main second district and Nebraska second. And then the guy is already, I believe, to 260, assuming he wins Florida, which I do believe will stay with Trump. They love incumbents in Florida. We mention that quite often. So basically all he does is he needs Wisconsin to win. And if he wins Wisconsin and New Hampshire, he's at 274 which means he doesn't have to worry about any faithless electors screwing him over. That's going to be a good thing for Trump moving forward is that he's got a map that is uh, very wide open for Trump. And I don't believe that Biden is going to win all the battleground states. If you look at this map, yes, he'll win Virginia. He'll probably win New Mexico and Colorado. I've been saying that for a while. He, The states that Biden 
is probably going to narrowly hold. Might include places like Nevada, Minnesota, maybe New Hampshire, Maine at large. I don't believe Biden's going to win Wisconsin. I don't believe Biden's going to win his home state, his home state, they say, of uh, Pennsylvania. Um, his home state's Delaware. Um, Delaware. He's not from. He's not from the coal country. He's from big credit card company country. That's Delaware. Um, and Michigan is, I believe, Michigan and Arizona. Those are going to be the two key toss-ups. I think that uh, Trump is going to be a little bit in trouble in Arizona. I think he's still going to win it. That's why I put the over and under at um, 310. So the main point of this video is people are not just going to be super energized about Biden come election day. Um, people look at primary turnout. Historically, primary turnout means very, very little, especially now with these big scandals coming out about Biden. These could very well doom his campaign in the long run. So take the polls with a grain of salt. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media, link is in description, and join the Discord and subreddit. Donate to the Patreon and subscribe star, all those links are down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.